Play ball. Welcome back to the On Deck Circle podcast. I am your host and director of Dynasty Baseball at FantasySixPack.net, Dave Eddy. Before we get started, if you could please go ahead and hit that like button for us, that would definitely be much appreciated. If you're not subscribed, uh, go ahead and get that taken care of. But uh, let's go ahead and get into things, folks. So here we go. <laughs> All right, welcome in to a uh, Tuesday edition here uh, on Deck Circle Podcast. Uh, joined, of course, by our resident heartthrob, Mr. Nick Zanaboni, and Hello. our and our hat wearer, Mr. Jason Beckner. Uh, as promised, joining me to talk a little bit of Dynasty Baseball. Uh, go ahead and say hello there, boys. Hello. What's going on, everyone? Happy Wander Franco Day. Yeah. Is he in the Hall of Fame yet? I think so. Uh, yeah. I mean, he hasn't gotten out in his career. Yeah. yeah. He's already got a, a thousand on base percentage. Let's just <laughs> wrap it up there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what's that make his OPS, Jason? <laughs> a thousand. <laughs> there you go. Oh, he's batting second? Yeah. yeah. And playing third. Yeah. Wow. He's going to get up this inning. I'll uh, I'll do a live play-by-play. Please don't. Hey, the, his first at bat, he, he fell 0-2 and uh, yeah. left the count Battle. back. And, Battle. Yeah, Battle. Battle. Well, I mean, I guess we, we've jumped right into our, our first topic, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. Which is, I, I don't know if it's long-awaited, but I guess it feels like it's been long-awaited um, promotion here for Wander Franco. Uh, so it's Wander time. Uh, 26th overall in my dynasty rankings. Um, still got him a spot behind uh, Kalenic. But, you know, Tampa Bay called him up for tonight's game against the Red Sox. Surprised that um, Nick didn't make his way to that game. But I don't it's think I really <laughs> – What? It's in Tampa. I, can't I, don't, do I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> but uh, I, I, don't, like I, said, I don't think I got to tell you guys who Juan Franco is. Uh, but – in case somehow you're watching this and just are not quite sure. Um, long story short, he is arguably the top prospect in the game, uh, top two at worst uh, with Kalenic. Uh, five to a guy, uh, definitely has Hall of Fame upside. Um, so I guess let's just get into to what you guys think about the call up and what do you expect from Wander? Oh, man. I mean, this, this is one, you know, you get a top prospect only graduates every couple of years. And so when it happens, it's kind of a, you know, he's been back to back number one prospect, I think, for two years in a row now. So he finally gets that to get to make make his debut. And um, yeah, I mean, it's funny because you go on, I went on to uh, MLB.com earlier today. And I mean, it's like top five articles and it's just plastered all over both pipeline and MLB.com. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I mean, rightfully so. I mean, this, you know, this is a, this is the biggest shock to you is this kid's 20 years old. Uh, he was born in 2001, so I mean, yeah, it was almost about Nick's age, I think. <laughs> yeah, first first player from from the century to to make it to the big leagues. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, and he's only the second ever player to get an 80 grade hit tool. Um, so that's kind of a uh, you know. Who was the first? Well, well, we'll talk about him lately. We'll talk about <laughs> yeah. him here a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the stuff that this kid's doing as a 20 year old is just, I mean, immaculate. It's like. Yeah, you know, a lot of times you see these kind of stats out of someone that's like kind of a, more of a veteran, someone that's been around. But I mean, I even remember even as like a 15 year old Ben Badler touting this guy is like in the Dominican uh, junior leagues. So I mean, skill set's just a not phenomenal man. Approach the plate's great. I mean, in his 945 plate appearances, he's only struck out 75 times. Holy shit! Yeah, he's even walked more than he struck out. He's wow. never never hit lower than 300. And as a rookie in rookie ball, you know, he's 17. He's going against guys that are usually like 19, 20, I think is an average age. So he's like, he's always been younger than this competition. Um, I mean, as a rookie, as a 17 year old, he hit 11 home runs, 57 RBIs, and four stolen bases. He's going to offer some of that stolen base speed. Uh, he's stolen 20, 29 bags in his minors. That included his 2019, 2019 season, he sold 18. I mean, and, and you know, as a 20-year-old, that AAA has just been raking, too. So, I mean, it's not like he's not warranted in this call-up. I mean, it's batting 371 and had 17 RBIs in June alone. So, I mean, what's not to like about this kid, you know? 
Yeah, I'm pumped. I was, I, I don't think was he highly like touted coming into the J two class. Like, was he like the top guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, he was definitely one of the top guys of the 2017 class. I mean, as a 17 year old too. So I mean, that's you know, a lot of times those J two guys, you know, they got to get scooped up early. So I mean, at being a 17, it's not anything out of the ordinary to be you know in J two class at 17. But yeah. Yeah, he was he was highly touted, man. Like I said, um, you know Ben Bather, I think works does a lot of work with MLB. Um, he was touting him as a fifteen year old as a, in the Dominican. Yeah, Junior. so he's so, been I mean, around the circuit, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be curious if he got the most money. I'm going to look that up while. Yeah, that I wouldn't know about. I'm not sure about the signing. You you said it was 2017. But, yeah. Um, I a mean, little bit off topic, but th- that's one thing that. You know, I, I tend to tell people to shy away from when you're looking at, um, you know, doing research on just dynasty value. Don't don't look at you know which guy signed for the most money and, and think that that makes them more valuable. Um, so Wander just, was number one. Yeah, I mean, I mean it makes sense, but sometimes guys will sign for for more just because you know a team is offering them you know more yeah. in a in a bidding war, and so it's not an apples to apples kind of a thing, but. Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what we get from him. Um, I think he probably has an advantage, you know, in, in some respects to coming up after Kalenic because, you know, he, we, we've seen, you know, a prospect that has came up now, obviously, you know, highly touted and, and really struggled. So even if Wander comes up and is somewhere in between, you know, Kalenic and, and absolutely killing it, that might have been disappointing. Um, but now after seeing, you know, what Kalev did, you know, if he struggles a little bit, I don't think that it'll have the same sour taste that, you know, we saw from Kalenic. And, you know, this is a guy that I think at his, at his, you know, prime easily, you know, could end up being, you know, best player in, you know, dynasty baseball, you know, very easily, you know, you know, could be a 30 home run guy. Um, you know, it's going to, going to hit 300 probably fairly consistently. I mean, that that's his, you know, biggest you know, calling card. Um, mm-hmm. You're looking at a guy that's going to probably have like a 400, you know, on base percentage as well, uh, yep. which is obviously going to be helped by that, you know, average. But as we saw in his first plate appearance, you know, um, you know, the, the guy's not afraid to take a walk. And, you know, still the bases aren't going to be outrageous, but, you know, double digits, um, you know, are probably going to be pretty consistent. I don't know that he'll ever steal, you know, 20, 25 bags, but, you know, somewhere in the, you know, 10 to 15 neighborhood is, is probably going to be, um, you know, put up for quite a while, at least until he, you know, maybe, you know, grows into that frame a little bit. But, you know, that could be five, six, seven, eight years down the road. I mean, look at Trout. You know, I mean, Trout was still the bases like, like crazy. Christ. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what so, team is he going to go in the, in, in, in the Hall of Fame with? Because it's not going to be the Rays. <laughs> it's going to be the next not going to be the Rays. I don't know. Um, I guess take your pick. Cubs, Red Sox, Yankees, Yankees I mean, Dodgers. Dodgers. Yeah. Uh, one of those four. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it'll be it'll be interesting, but <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see what he does. Um, topic that I actually wanted to cover last week, but we just didn't have time. And this doesn't necessarily revolve around Vladimir Guerrero Jr., but it, it's kind of you know the perfect example. And so I guess long story short, um, the conversation I want to have, and so the question I want to ask you guys is, you know, could a, a player quote unquote like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Um, you know, someone that doesn't contribute in all categories, but is, you know, elite in the vast majority of them. Do you think a guy like that could ever be the, the number one player in dynasty baseball? I would say yes. If the only, so with Vlad, it's obviously the stolen bases. Yeah. (laughs) But like, I, like I think I said it here last week or a couple weeks ago, stolen bases are slowly going to make their way out of the game because the nerds don't believe in them. And the nerds are starting to run these organizations. The nerds are starting to coach these organizations. They're not going to be – they're running it out. It's because they're not playing for a single to knock in the guy that steals second base. They're playing for the home run. I don't know, Cubby. Um <laughs> I'm going to assume that's a typo, and he meant uh, to type bat without that healthy bat of yours. 
but um, <laughs> last thing we need is is John egging him on. But uh, all right, well, hey, thanks for thanks for participating and watching, guys. We 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 do appreciate, appreciate it. it. But like I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna put that back up. Please continue, Nick. Uh, they're getting rid of stolen bases, so. <laughs> We broke him. Sort of for this. We broke yep. him. Oh, yes. He broke him. Uh, the heart, the heart has been broken. They're getting rid of stolen bases. So if that's the one thing you're worrying about, then you don't – like you can find a stolen base on a fucking waiver wire for all I care. He's contributing everywhere else at an, at an elite level, and that's all that really matters. So the well, only thing I'll counter to that point, though, is I would say that if they do kind of, you know, end up getting rid of stolen bases, then – I would argue that that would make Vlad less valuable because stolen bases would then become a, a high premium. You know, if, if yeah. you've got a guy that's stealing, you know, if the league leader, let's just say theoretically, is stealing 20, 25 bags, you know, where, you know, 10 bags is, is be, all of a sudden became like a lot, then mm-hmm. that's going to make it to me even harder, you know, for someone like Vlad, you know, to, to be number one, just to, yeah. to, just as a counter to that point. Oh no, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, what, what do you got there, Jason? What are your thoughts? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm actually going to agree with Nick here on this. Um, I think what, you know, what Vlad brings in those four other categories is just, it's too much. The value is too high to be concerned about the lack of stolen bases. I mean, let's be honest. We're looking here at like, we're basically comparing him to Tatis and Acuna, right? So, and maybe even a little bit mm-hmm. to Trout, but, Otani, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 Otani at this point too. Yeah. Um, but those are your yeah, four, yeah. Yeah, I mean his OBP alone is just the value that he brings there. Comp- let's look mm-hmm. compare it to Tatis. He's seventy points higher. He's got an OBP that's over four hundred, almost pushing four fifty. I think his o- OBP will always hover above four hundred, and I don't know if Tatis can quite get to that mark. Um, you know, obviously Tatis is also going to start like Nick said. The stolen bases are regressing. Everyone's no one's stealing bases. Uh, I mean, some people are, but at some point, those like Tatis and them are not going to be stealing bases. What, what, those four other four categories that Vlad is, um, you know, bringing value to, he will always be higher than I believe, and then those other guys. Um, so I think, even though he's not going to, you know, you know, steal twenty to thirty bags like you know a Tatis or even Acuna does, um, his value in those other four categories are just just better and more valuable too. Your, let's say a five by five standard roto league. So I think this is where I'm going to surprise you guys a little bit because I, I think that you know of the three of us sitting here, I probably am, I probably am the biggest homer, um, you know, for for Vlad. And I wish I could turn my camera around here and, and show you the shrine of <laughs> balls and bats and jerseys and signed cards and ticket stubs and bobbleheads and everything I got over here of him, um, but. I guess I'm going to be the one guy who says um, who says no. I, I don't think he can be under you know the the way that it's currently set. And and the reality is the reason I say that is you know even if he leads the league in batting average, on base percentage, home runs, RBIs, you know even if he leads the league in all of the things that he is good in, he gives you a big fat zero in stolen bases. And, you know, the guys that we're talking about, you know, Tatis and Otani and Acuna, they aren't that far behind him in these other categories. I mean, if we're talking about, you know, even just so far for this season, for home runs, um, Vlad and Otani are tied. Tatis is one back and Acuna is three back. So even worst case scenario, you lose three home runs between Vlad and Acuna. Not a humongous deal. Uh, Batting average, they're pretty much all you know, in, in a similar situation here. So Acuna's 290, uh, Tatis 291, Otana 272. Vlad's got a healthy lead there, 337. So that's nice. But then when you get to, you know, the stolen bases, Vlad isn't even competitive. You know, he's got two. Otani's got 10, Tatis 14, Acuna 15. So the little bit that he might be able to make up, you know, here and there, I think it's dwarfed by that lack of a big fat zero for, for stolen bases. So he literally has to almost have a perfect season to, you know, be right up there, you know, with these other guys when he's not going to steal any bags. So as much as I absolutely love Vlad, 
to, to think that he's ever going to be the no doubt number one, you know, dynasty option, I, I think is, is just asking too much. You're, you're always going to have somebody who's going to fairly equally contribute across his best categories, but it's going to dominate him in stolen bases. So I just don't ever think that you'll be able to look at him and say he's number one, you know, barring some miracle where, you know, it's obviously never going to happen. But if he could just get you 15 bags, then that would put him on a whole different level, yeah. you know, give him a whole different playing field, you know, maybe, maybe even 10, I guess. But just as the way it sits now, unfortunately, you know, I think Tatis and, and Acuna are, are almost no doubters above him, even though, you know, I, I, I do like Vlad more just kind of in general. Do you, do you know what, what about I mean? Soda? Yeah. Uh, again, so, I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm just missing – it's the same kind of thing where I don't think, you know, Soto is is good enough in all those categories. Um, you know, it, if anything, you know, Vlad is a little bit better of a version if, if we get the 2021 version of him because, again, you know, Soto's not stealing the bags, you know, that yeah. – that these guys are. And that's part of the the value, you know, that you get with Acuna and Tatis. You know, they're going to give you the power numbers, maybe not as good, but they're going to give you power numbers mm-hmm. that are, you know, right up there at the top of the league, but they're stealing your bags. I mean, really yeah. where they hurt you, I guess, is, you know, in batting average, but a 270 batting average, is that really hurting your team? It, you know, it's, it's not sure. hurting. It's not hurting your team. Um, and these guys are still hitting around 300, you know. So, um, as much as I hate to say it, you know, I just I'd rather have five, you know, above average, you know, contributing categories than okay. have four elite and just nothing on another. Just, and that's hard for me to say because I mean I would love to put Vlad number one, like that. Yeah. That's my dude. But I just. You know, he'd have to have a season that's just outrageous, you know, where he'd have to hit 70 home runs and, you know, bat, you know, 375. And, you know, he'd just have to just be an absurd advantage in all those categories that make up the the big old zero in stolen bases. Hey, he has two this year. Don't give him a little credit. Yeah. How many of those were like a double steal? <laughs> Probably both know? of them. Probably both of them. Yeah. So, I don't know. That, that's just something that I find very interesting because yeah. no matter how good of a, of a, of a batter he is or somebody, you know, in his case, you know, could be, I just, I just don't think he could ever overtake the guys that literally, you know, do Do it all. Yeah. All right, Jason, why don't you go ahead and hijack this for a minute? Um, Talk about uh, advanced stat of the week that, that you've gotten here for us. Sure. So this week we're going to talk about OPS. I know it's not the most advanced of stats, but you know, back in the day that, that used to be like, And advanced that now it's a very mainstream thing, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just actually a simple calculation of uh, players on base percentage and their slugging percentage. Um, it measures two important hitting skills, and that's getting on base as well as hitting for power. Um, generally, anything above 800 is considered in the upper tier of hitters, and uh, anything above 1,000 is actually considered elite and usually in the top 1% of the league. Um, and usually those guys are the guys that you're seeing in the MVP races. Um, and currently, right now in 2021, we only have five players um, with an OPS above 1,000. And one of those, actually, the leader in OPS is uh, our boy we just talked about, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that, you know, one of these things that's these stats is kind of just becoming in vogue. I mean, ESPN, even at this point on their Sunday Night Baseball, puts the uh, the player's OPS as the first list on that uh, the slash line. You know, usually you see the, the average, yeah, but, yeah, I'm based on the slugging. And now, when the, you know they show the little box or the graphic underneath the batter when they're coming up to bat, they they like to flash that OPS now and kind of show you where they rank as according to um on the OPS scale. So I mean, <laughs> so again, it's just one of those stats that's kind of coming in vogue and just coming more to the limelight. A little bit more on the simpler side for advanced, but you know they can't all be super nerdy. Uh, you know, bust out your Excel spreadsheet and figure out mm-hmm. you know what stat you're going to look at this time. So you know, I kind of like the OPS again and just kind of. You know, measures to the more important skills, and uh, and I guess that you know, if you look at some of the um, poor Alec Baum. leaders, what's that? Poor Alec Baum. I know yeah. what a what a dick. What in the <laughs> world? I know. I listen. I it, it paid me to type that in there because I was all aboard. Same. I, listen, we talked about oh, this a couple it? weeks ago, and I, I'm still buying Alec Baum, but yeah, 
Unfortunately, uh, yeah, he's bottom five in the league right now in, in OPS. Damn. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're not even – I mean, a lot of these people's OPS, you know, you're looking at, you know, Profar, Andrews, 557. A lot of these guys are yeah. slugging more than that. You know oh, what wow. I mean? And it's like yeah. – uh, it's. I think Tatis' slugging is at like six something. So it's like the comparison, just like how um, different of the spectrum that is versus the top of the league and the bottom of the league. It's like, and again, you look at these top five guys. I mean, these guys can all make a good case for being uh, the MVPs of their league. So and way good still. This oh doesn't yeah, even, like he's still holding on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's still been on a tear. So I mean. You can kind of just see where um, you know another another great uh, in line with um, what you, what you can look at when you're comparing players and analyzing different players and you know who's doing really well at the moment. So yeah, I mean it's, it's a good simple uh, advanced stat. And like Dave said, it's more of a more in the line with our our older generation here compared uh-huh. to Nick's uh, Nick's generation. But yeah, it's still a good one. Yeah, I've actually heard of this advanced stat. Yeah, <laughs> and I and and I knew it as soon as. I saw the group text. I said, "Oh, that's uh, on base plus slugging," <laughs> and I knew it. And I was and I was proud of myself. Absolutely. And, and I mean, I even see, and I don't know. I guess it's probably been going on for a few years at least. But you know, I, I'm even of the mindset of agreeing that you know, average to me, you know, average to me takes a backseat to on base percentage. Like if I if I just oh, want to no. look, if you had to, you know tell me a player's average or on-base percentage, which one I, I care more about. I, I care more about the on-base percentage, honestly. Um, and you even see OPS being, you know, a, a category now a lot of times in, you know, in, in, in fantasy baseball. And it's not uncommon to see, you know, average, not even a category. You know, it's, you know, it used to just simply be replaced by on-base percentage. And now a lot of times you just see average swapped out for OPS. It's a more, you know, it, it, it's a more, it's a better measuring stick in my opinion. And unlike ISO a few weeks ago, you know, where you have to have a large sample size, you know, you've got to get three, four, you know, 500 at bats before that number starts to really get dialed in. OPS again, just like anything, you know, you, you, the bigger, the better, but you know, once you start getting to this point of the year, you know, 150, 200 at bats, that number starts to really reflect, uh, you know, a lot of stuff, um, you know. So I think it's it's an easy one. It's a pretty mainstream one, and I think it's a good one. It's definitely helpful. Yeah. All right, Jason, why don't you go ahead and flip that hat around? Oh, we're, oh okay, we're going sure. right into this. This is the new thing now? All right. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you wore it, man. So um, let, let's let's do a little buy, sell, hold, and we're going to talk about uh, – Eric Cross's boy, I almost asked him to come on for a minute just to just try to talk us, you know, persuade us a little bit here. But um, we'll talk Garrett Hampson. Um, batting 251 this year uh, with an X batting average of 233. So, you know, in line a little bit. Um, Bad bit of 311. So that's actually, you know, a little bit on the high side for, for what you'd expect from him. Uh, very surprisingly low. 307 on base percentage so oh that, that that's a killer for him um you you'd hope that in a perfect world for the kind of player that garrett hampson is you'd want to see a batting average around that that mark not a non base percentage but his ex woba uh 319 so right in line so that you know that's about where he should be um and then to get to that ops 747 so that's not to write home about uh, but that's being killed by that on base percentage um six home runs 12 stolen bases, so, you know, he's definitely a guy that you probably got for getting you some bags, you know, and he's at least accomplished in that. If he got that on base up to, you know, 325, you know, 330, he might be able to slide another couple in there. As far as, you know, the advanced metrics, uh, nothing nothing real good here. Um, 19th percentile ex um 31st percentile in, in barrels. So. A whole lot of blue. Yeah, just not a lot, not a lot of good stuff. Ten percentile um, hard hit percentage. He's still two hundred and third in my rankings, just because you know he does play in Colorado. Um, you know, it would just take a couple hot weeks for his numbers to you know make a huge improvement, especially you know like power categories and stuff. So, what are you guys thinking for Garrett Hampson? Uh, is that a buy, sell, or hold for you? I I've never had him anywhere. 
That guy's smart. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Do you are you in charge of like putting them up? Because <laughs> what they just about? pop up. Like, did you see this? What you mean? Do, could I do this? Is that what you're asking? Or could I do this? Yeah. Okay. All right. So yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> so I'm. I've never been a Garrett Hampson guy. So bias would tell me to sell, but I wouldn't have him. He's like he'll he'll still he'll still steal you some bases, but he hasn't shown me that he can do anything actually else in the at the big league level. So I'm not rostering him anywhere unless it's like a 30 team. I mean, I guess we're in a 30 teamer, but yeah, sure. if he's the only <laughs> second baseman I can have, I'd take him or outfield. Is he now center but, field? Now? I mean, both. Both. Yeah. He yeah. Both. But I'm just, I'm just not a Garrett Hampson guy. So no. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think you have to hold them at this point. Um, the problem with Hampson is Colorado, like all, a lot of their middle infielders, they don't want to give them the playing time. They want to keep shuffling them all around. And uh, yeah, fuck it. Let's side, let's side Matt Kemp, you know, yeah. like, like what the fuck? Yeah. And if he, if he got the playing time, he'd be a great asset. I mean, this guy, you know, and he might even get it too, because, you know, story could be getting shipped out soon. And then, no, he will slide. be getting shipped out soon. Yeah. Right. So you slide, you know, Rogers over to short and hopefully you get Hampson some, consistent playing time at second but you know we know the rockies they won't do that so but if you look at the playing consistent time i mean his speed ranks the top one percent of the league yeah he even had a season in the low minors where he's over 50 bags um he's already got 12 yeah. this season that's good enough for top 10 in the league you know i pair him with some vlad and then now you're talking but yeah, yeah he's I cutting mean, down on the strikeouts he's hitting the ball harder he's increases hard hit rate and his average exit velocity so i mean Again, I think a lot of it just isn't those, it's just not getting the consistent playing time, to be honest with you. I mean, you know how, I mean, some guys, they need that consistent playing time to get in a groove and get things going. So they really are a mess there. Like, they, it just sucks. <laughs> like, how long did it take for, I cannot say his name for the life of me, Tapia? Yeah. yeah. Romeo Tapia. Like, he's been a prospect for like a, like, it, like, up and down, AAA to the majors, and he's just finally getting his like due time, I get or playing time. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and, he, and he's a decent ball player, you know. Yes, and he would have been a decent ball ball, ball player three years ago. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. They're terrible. I yeah, it's 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 weird what they do, but and it doesn't work. So like, yeah, no shit, right? Do, like, do something new. <laughs> So last one here is a surprising one, I think, for a lot of people. I don't even know how many people know who Lucas Sims is. Um, but but Lucas Sims is is definitely a guy that is got some interesting numbers right now. So if you look at his just you know regular stat line, um, 26 games, throwing 27 and two-thirds innings. Um, again, someone gives a shit, he's four and one. Uh he's got seven saves, he's blown two, and he's got four holds. ERA doesn't stand out to you. It's a 4.23, so, you know, not great, but not bad. Uh, XR, XERA, though, is only 2.38. So definitely, you know, definitely that ERA is inflated a little bit. Uh, XFIP comes in at 367. That's a little more in line um, with the ERA. Uh, whip is at 1.16. That's not too bad. Uh, walking too many guys, though. He's got 14 walks. Uh, so that's quite a bit for, you know, 20, 27 innings. Uh, but striking out guys at a decent pace there uh, with 43 strikeouts. Uh, CSW percentage, 34.2. So, you know, anything over 30 is, is pretty good, and he's, he's well above that. Um, he's got an X batting average of only 156. So that that's extraordinarily um, low. That XBA is actually top 98th percentile. And most of his numbers, when you start getting to the advanced stuff, uh, like I said, when you think of a you know 4.23 ERA, that doesn't stand out to you. But I mean, 96 percentile x boba, 96 percentile x ERA, uh, 99th percentile in barrels, 96 percentile in K percentage, uh, 87th percentile hard hit rate. So um, he's he's getting the job done. The numbers just aren't quite reflecting it. And part of it is you know he's walking too many guys. Like I said. Um, Throws the ball as hard as anyone, 99th percentile fastball velocity. And then kind of to go with, um, you know, spin rate last week, his curveball is top 99th percentile in spin rate. Um, 
so I don't know, man, the kind of numbers that I think would surprise the, you know, the, the, the casual person there. So um, looks like he's the guy, at least for now in Cincinnati, um, as far as, you know, closing is concerned, he's on my TGFBI team, picked him up off nice. waivers a couple weeks ago for like nothing. Nice. Um, so I got a little, I got a little skin in the game there, but uh, what, what are two unbiased uh, gentlemen think about Lucas Sims right now? Buy, sell, or hold? Well, let me stop right there because this is a coincidence because I actually just wrote Lucas Sims up in my most recent buy sell. Hmm. I wonder if, if that's read, a coincidence, Jason. And if you read it, hmm. I said do buy Lucas Sims. Um, but yeah, I like what he's currently doing, man. He, they, it seems like they want to start giving him some more high leverage situations, some closing situations. I mean, Cincinnati's desperate for a closer. Amir Garrett has been awful. Sean Doolittle has been awful. Um, he's, like I said, he's seven out of nine chances right now. Yeah, he's got to cut down on those walks. Um, his CSW is, I think, good enough for 20th amongst all qualified pitchers. That's it's, I mean, it was like what 34 and some change. It's yeah, I, I, that's a great number. Yep. Yeah, his advanced stats are literally off the charts. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's, he's he's way, I mean, that ERA just does it's just not in line, you know. And I didn't look at his game log, so I would have to assume he had a blow up, you know, he could have easily had yeah, a sure. five run, a five run game, you know, with with, with you know, a third of an inning and. In 27 innings, that'll jump your ERA, you know, point and a half right there. So, you know, his numbers look more like he'd have like a buck and a half ERA, not not four and some change. Yeah, and, you know, he was a starter at one point. Obviously, that didn't work out. And then once he went to the bullpen, he kind of, you know, stopped, <clears throat> stopped um, you know, relying on the changeup and sinker. And basically went to a three-pitch mix, which, you know, obviously yeah, that happens a lot of times when you go to the bullpen. You kind of focus on those two, three-pitch mix. But then you can actually, like, you know – you know, refine these pitches and actually, you know, get them up to a point where, yeah, you get that strikeout rate going high and all of a sudden you're closing games and you're closing 30, 40 games a year. And I think, you know, if you can cut down on those walks and Cincinnati can keep them around, you know, he could be a top 10 closer. I think, you know, I mean, he's got the, he's got sure. the pitching available uh, repertoire to be able to do something like that. So I, I'm, I'm all on him. I'm buying him at this point. Dave, you get him to be cheap in your league at this point because he's still not confirmed closer so kind of a committee there in Cincinnati so you could probably get him at a relatively cheap at this point and then you know you know he could take off as that, that uh, closer job yeah so this is just complete just strategy for me I'd be selling them I don't believe in <laughs> uh, saves and holds every one of my teams I lose yeah, that category I almost every week I don't blame you. with winning 11 to 1 I mean not all the time but in general yeah. I can find the ratios somewhere else with just like like a Garrett Whit Whit Whitlock for the Red Sox. Strikes out a bunch of guys, so my K per nine goes up. But he's not getting me many holes, but that's fine. And because you can save, because you can trade these guys because people are after saves because they think the opposite of me. They're like, well, if I'm going to win one, I might as well win holds and saves. So I'd be selling, see what you get for him. His number, like – a manager will look at the ERA and be like, well, he's not like that good. He has a fucking four, whatever. Or whatever. But, but you're learning though, right? Now you're learning and you're looking past that, that yes, ERA. Exactly. I'm and you're, and but you're looking at these, all these top 95 to percentiles and going, right. holy shit, that ERA is some nonsense, you know? Yeah. So if you can find a sucker, <clears throat> there are two suckers right here. <laughs> to buy Lucas. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take you it. I, I, I would it. buy it. Yeah. yeah. It's, exactly. So the one thing that I will warn, and this goes directly back to last week's episode, and I'm not saying that this is the case. I'm just saying, you know, if, if you are interested in buying, maybe you wait two weeks because that fastball, uh, or I'm sorry, that, that curveball spin rate is, like I said, at yeah. 99th percentile in league. Mm -hmm. Now, it's why? Go down. Why? Point, well, why point. is that? Why is right. that? You know what I mean? I mean, I have no problem with these guys using spider tack and all that bullshit. So if that's if that's why, I I don't care. But if you're an owner, that's something to keep in mind. You know, if all of a sudden he starts, you know, maybe not getting lit up, but all of a sudden, you know, he starts, you know, going downhill a little bit. If that's the reason why, you know, then you could be in trouble. You know, he he will he won't be able to bounce back from from something like that. So so if you are going to buy, I would literally say give it a couple weeks. It yeah. might make his price go up. But you know what? I'd rather pay a dollar twenty to to get a dollar back from them than to pay a dollar and get twenty cents. You know what I mean? So yeah, good uh, point. So that that's just my thoughts that's on smart. him, and and I'll actually uh, 
I'll make that my final thought, boys. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So buy Lucas Sims, but give it a couple weeks and, and just make sure that you know everything stays its course. Um, my final thought is I bought a dope Pedro jersey yesterday. And hopefully it'll be here by next week so I can wear it for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Just that, though. Person. No pants or any – just no jersey. Pants. I mean, how do you know I'm wearing it now? I'm totally <laughs> wearing pants now. Wait, did Wander come up again? Where's our live uh, oh, play-by-play? Play? No, he didn't okay. because the Red Sox just had a five-run inning. <laughs> well, good because – spoiler really alert. I got We got the NFL or NBA draft lottery happening here in just a few minutes. So, <laughs> Oh. Uh, Go Bulls. Are the Pistons in the lottery again? Oh yeah, uh, really? yeah. Pistons yeah. are in the lottery. If it's a Detroit sports team, they suck. <laughs> so yes, yes. I I miss those lottery days. They were so much fun. All right, Jason. Anything? Any any actual wisdom to to depart with? Uh, no, go watch Wonder Franco. <laughs> well, there you go. You heard the all man. Right. See ya. <laughs> all right, we'll catch you all next week. See ya. I'll I'll just take a run. Thank <laughs> you.